What is good, all of our listeners and viewers? Welcome to another episode of Games and Groceries. My name is Adam. And I'm Liz. And that sounded more aggressive than I wanted to. <laughs> we're at episode 98, and we're going to be talking about Don't Let Video Games Take Your Entire Life. But before we get to the, that segment, we've got some other segments for you. Yes, we do. See, that was less aggressive than Games and Groceries. Well, it's better than our very first intro, where it was yeah. like not aggressive at all. It's well, like, we're going to get there in episode okay. 100. Don't talk about episode one until we get to episode 100. Okay. Yeah. We're at episode 98, but you reminded me. Oh my gosh, your hand is freezing. Yeah, because I have no soul. I mean, I'm sweating, but th that was really cold. Stop! So... We're coming up on episode 100, <laughs> um, and we're going to be having an Ask Us Anything podcast. Yes. So if you have any questions you would like to ask us and you don't want to forget about them, you can definitely tweet at us, uh, tweet those questions at us on Twitter, at Gaming Groceries, and use the hashtag please and thank you, uh, the hashtag GG100. So at Gaming Groceries, hashtag GG100, mm -hmm. or you can DM us on Instagram, Games and Groceries, all one word, or if you want to, email us. You can email us at gamesandgroceries at gmail.com or contact at gamesandgroceries.com. Are there any more ors? Or um, you can send it by pigeon. <laughs> I don't know. Just send it by pigeon. Uh, but there you go. Four ways to send in your questions for Ask Us Anything on episode 100, which is uh, coming May 11th. So that's cool. Yeah. There's no guest today. Uh, we have a guest next it's week. Just us. <laughs> yeah. This is your pen. Uh, there you go. Um, but yeah, it's just us. But if you're new here, hi. Welcome to Games and Groceries. We don't have any <laughs> groceries here, but what we do have are timestamps. If you want to fast forward to any certain segment, you are free to do so because this is the American dream uh, timestamps. You can go ahead and do as you will. And if you like these intro podcasts, definitely check out our other show, What's the Biz? Yeah. If you like us just talking about anything or whatever, uh, catch us on What's the Biz. We're now on iHeartRadio. With What's the Biz. We're on Spotify, Breaker, Radio Public, iHeartRadio, all except for iTunes. I'm still waiting on iTunes. iTunes As is a hard one to get into. It is. It takes a couple weeks. But um, yeah, before we get into it, Liz, how you doing? You doing good? I'm good. Yeah? Yeah. I got a new makeup brush. Yeah. I um, I really hate the sponges. Mm. Um, so, but I've never tried a foundation brush and I, I really like it because I feel like it gets better coverage. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I enjoy it so far. I just got it today. Yeah. So yay. That's also, good. Also, it's really hot in here. Is it? I, when I first walked in, I was like, oh, it's not been here. And then I sat down to do this. I'm like, all right, I'm sweating. Yeah. So yay lights. I thought my beard would grow in a little bit more before the next episode, but... Uh, quite now it, it's, it's looking a little scraggly right now it's definitely the undercover but, cop look or not the undercover the um the stakeout cop yeah but um mm. yeah it's not quite the length of your mustache yet not yet i i Maybe might next week yeah probably next by week, next week it'll probably be um more filled in and i'll probably trim the mustache by then so it'll all match up next episode so i'm just looking at the viewfinder right now and i'm like Ooh. so <laughs> uh i think we can get started with the show it's enough banter for now but uh liz i'm glad you're doing good and if you want more just us talking about whatever uh definitely check out what's the biz it's completely unscripted completely unscripted uh definitely check it out we've got three episodes up so far what's the biz with adam and liz on spotify iHeartRadio, radio public and the, yeah but you can follow us on social media here with games and groceries yeah i already mentioned one twitter at gaming groceries or you can follow us individually i'm at ace the grocer and I'm at Journey First. So be friends with us on Twitter in that way. But also follow us on Instagram. I always said that too. Games and Groceries, all one word, where you can see the behind the scenes photos and uh, little questions I'll ask you about the discussions we have on the podcast. And check us out on Facebook. Yep, Facebook. There we are. We're on That's Facebook. Uh, you can check out our website, Games and Groceries. Dot com where you wow. can listen to all the episodes from the website as well as find out where you can listen to the audio versions of the website as well as some articles that I've written in the past. And if you haven't already, if you're watching us on YouTube, 
definitely hit that sub- subscribe button and that notification bell so that you know when all these podcasts come out as well as our Saturday videos that come out monthly. We're still working on it. It's going to be good. I promise you. It's about skateboarding games. It's going to be rad. Radical. <laughs> <He's> uh, so <laughs> uh, but definitely subscribe to us on YouTube if you haven't. And if you get to the end and you like what you saw, definitely give it a like. Definitely give it a share for more people to know about the podcast. And if you're listening to us on iTunes or any other uh, audio platform, subscribe to us and give us a review on Podchaser. Link down below. Check out Podchaser and give us a review there. All right. We banter on enough. It's enough of that. Let's talk about movies for a second or for a couple minutes because we're going to go into our first segment. Movie Minutes. Movie Minutes is a segment that we talk about the movies that we watched in the past week, whether it be on Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, not in theaters at this point in time. And we like to recommend it or we don't recommend it. So this week's movie is the ever astounding um, trending, if you will, with Chris Hemsworth, my yeah. man, my best buddy, Chris Hemsworth. We're best buddies. We go way back. Gotcha. I'm lying, but uh, the movie is called Extraction, and it's called and it's called Extraction because they keep saying Extraction in the movie Extraction. Yeah, and it's in Netflix. So, Liz, opening thoughts. What do you think? Um, it was good. It had a lot of good action scenes. Yeah. Um. If you don't, if you don't do like a lot of blood or gore, yeah, maybe not for you. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought, I mean, overall, it was a really good movie. I enjoyed it. Yeah. No, that's yeah. the thing. Uh, it's good. Uh, wait, what's this movie called again? Extraction. Oh, I I couldn't remember in the entire movie. Uh, I was telling Liz by the end. <laughs> okay, so. Smile spoiler. It's just what happens in the movie. Uh, there are so many grenades in this movie. <laughs> like they love them. It's their favorite form of yeah. attack. It, they love grenades. And then <laughs> by like nearing the end of the film, they bring in rocket powered grenades. I'm like, wow, yeah. you got to up your game. And they also say extraction at, at least at least 10 times yeah. if i'm not going to exaggerate at least 10 times in the entire yeah. movie uh but it's in called case it. you forgot the name <laughs> it's extraction the name of this movie is extraction but let's get into my first note here uh the beginning of the movie really sets itself up to be a you know a nostalgic 80s kind of action movie but it's modernized and it's fantastic uh, like i could tell from the get-go like this is I don't want to say it was a love letter to 80s action movies. It wasn't like Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was a love letter to Spider-Man. This was a modernized 80s kind of Schwarzenegger, Stallone kind of action movie like Commando. And I was trying to think of the one with Stallone and um, Antonio Banderas. That was really good. And I can't remember the name of it. Uh, But it's kind of like those. I've never seen an 80s action movie. I've (gasps) only seen modern day ones. No! You've never seen Commando? No. You've seen Rambo. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that was 80s. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was 90s. No, no, it's not 90s. Uh, I think it's 80s. Now I can't remember. Now oh, I got... Well, then I guess I have seen an 80s. But either way, I haven't yeah. watched a ton of those. It's definitely... My 80s movies are limited to The Breakfast Club and mm-hmm. Molly Ringwald. No, it's definitely that kind of like all American 80s action throwback. And you can tell that the directors loved, the producers mm-hmm. loved 80s action movies. You can tell by the blood of this movie. Yeah. Um, pun intended, I guess. But the, by the blood and the DNA of this film, it was an 80s action film all mm-hmm. around. So if you love 80s action movies, you're going to love Extraction. It's really, really excellent in that standpoint, right? If you like action movies, you should like it. Yeah. Oh, well, that, that brings me to my second note, which there's this scene, right? The There's a one-shot take. It's not a one-take shot, but if you've seen the movie 1917... It was a similar view. Yeah, where it's over the shoulder, and uh, but that's a beautiful part. It wasn't even over the shoulder because it was different vantage points, but mm-hmm. within the same scene, it was a one-shot take by different perspectives, and it's mm-hmm. really cool the way they did it. Yeah. What I really loved, especially about that scene, is it, w- it wasn't reliance on the movie. 
right? Like the movie didn't rely on that one scene. Yeah. So like it just had that. It's like they said, you know, it'd be cool to do in this scene. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, like it that was their idea. Yeah. And it was for, I want to say 20 minutes. A good, a good portion. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it was about 20 minutes. But then it just kind of like once the scene ended, once the action was played out, it moved like, on okay, to. we're done. Yeah, and moved on to single cuts. Mm-hmm. It it was a very special moment in the movie, but it was the movie wasn't reliance mm-hmm. on that kind of shot. Mm-hmm. Did you like that scene? Yeah, I did. Yeah, it was good. It was it was really good because there's one scene where you're outside of the car and then you're inside the car and then you're outside again. Yeah, that was great. I think that, that was my one thing is that I did kind of keep getting confused of where we were. Yeah, it was it was just cool the way it was shot. It was cool, but I did get confused a little mm-hmm. bit. But I was really impressed the way this was shot, though. And I, and I really like this movie. Um, brings me to my last note, though. This was just an all around. If you want to find meaning or depth to a movie like I do, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, but if you want to find any meaning or depth behind a movie, this isn't your movie. No, it is a good. It is just a basic action movie. Yeah. Basic, good old fashioned, just like what grandpa used to make kind of 80s action movie and that's what it was it was well paced the direction was great because mm-hmm. you knew exactly where you were supposed to go uh there are some emotional mo- moments in this movie that were just kind of like Meh. out of place and, and that's that's the only fault i had with this movie but over, overall i adored this film yeah this was good like this was a really good action movie it was didn't have depth to it it was just hey Listen, you like action movies? You like Chris Hemsworth? You like Chris Hemsworth blowing people's heads off? By the way, uh, um, for those who are saying like, oh, it's like John Wick. The action's like John Wick. Eh, eh, no, no. It's a different type of action. It is. I like the way, so immediately I watched uh, Sean Chandler's review mm-hmm. of it. And, you know, he was right. I was trying to figure out why it wasn't like it. Uh, John Wick is much more polished and fluid where this is a a, finesse fighter where this movie is a lot more brutal and yeah it's more like cage match fighting yeah 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 yeah, yeah, as opposed to like just like amazing to watch fighting where it's like Mm -hmm. do that right but uh yeah so let's go into our final ratings what did you give it I gave it a nine Mm -hmm. I genuinely liked this movie there were just there was that one heart to heart moment that I was like this doesn't seem right for this situation. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was like, like it was kind of like, how can we tell about this? Yeah. And that was the only way they could think about it. And they forgot to connect it. Um, it kind of reminded and me of that. There were a couple points where I was confused yeah. of like, wait, who like, not like, Oh, who's the enemy? It's like, mm-hmm. why is he the enemy? Yeah. I was like, I was, I got, so they confused me a little bit. Like they didn't quite explain some things when it happened. It just kind of happened. Um, but yeah, so I gave it a nine. I really liked it. I just got confused in a couple places. Yeah. I gave it a nine. I was thinking by the end, like I might give this a 10 because I can't find any faults, but then like really thinking about it, there were just a couple of things mm-hmm. where I was like, it's not the it completely but nothing original to nitpick, nothing to nitpick. Uh, like I said, the emotional scene kind of reminded me of Rambo 2, where it was just kind of like they're on a boat and they're just talking about Rambo's feelings. In the same way with this, kind yeah. of. Uh, you know, there's just. I mean, some... it's nice to know what's going on. Right. But it just felt out of place. Yeah, it just wasn't. It didn't fit. But I liked it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10, which is near perfect. Yeah. A 9 is a near perfect. Uh, 10 being just like, I couldn't find any flaws with it. Like we gave Parasite. Parasite mm-hmm. is fantastic. If you have not watched that yet, it's on Hulu. But we're talking about, what are we talking about again? What movie? Extraction. Platypus. No. <laughs> Extraction. It's on Netflix. Uh, go check it out. I gave it a 9. Liz, you gave it a 9. It's definitely a, a near perfect film. If you love 80s action movies, if you just love action movies, if you love Chris Hemsworth, if you love the Russo brothers who are involved in this movie, definitely check it out it's really really good so i think that brings us to our next segment right it's a video game podcast i think so yeah it's a it's a video game podcast so time to talk about some video game news with our second segment top three gaming news 
The top three gaming news is the gaming news that we saw in the past week, and we like to rank it three, two, one, just to give you a condensed version of what's going on in the game industry. So what's going on? Adam, what's going on? Well, here I am giving you a condensed version of what's going on. I'm not even in this show anymore. It is. I, what's going on in the gaming industry? Absolutely nothing. No, <laughs> give me the condensed version. Okay, ready, go. Three, two, one. No. No, you gotta... You, that one. No, no. Fine. I'll do this. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so let's go into number three. The number three gaming news, of course, is about Horizon Zero Dawn. Mm-hmm. It's a... Well, wait, hold on. Mm-hmm. Rumor alert. We gotta uh, get you a new sound. No, uh, except it's not really a rumor. I just want to use that. Say, it's not a rumor. Uh, it's kind of a rumor, sort of, not really. Uh, but yeah, so uh, according to reports from Video Game Chronicles, uh, apparently Veri- uh, Verizon, Zero- <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn is going to be. We are recording this a little later than we usually do. And it was a uh, long day in the office, but it is what it is. But, I was about to tell them what it was. I know, but I just said Verizon Zero I Dawn. Know. I was like, I know you did. What? Huh? It's because I want Ver- Verizon Fios. Anyways, um, <laughs> but Horizon Zero Dawn is becoming a trilogy, uh, according to Video Game Chronicles. So these are reports coming out, and apparently the next gen sequel is coming out, and it's supposed to be big, right? So we know, of course. If you play through Horizon Zero Dawn, it, there there is going to be a sequel. Like it, it kind of leaves off in that place, kind of mm, spoiler alerts, but there is this kind of like a place of there's going to be a sequel. Uh, what's going to happen to Aloy? Why are there robot monsters? Why is Adam keep talking? Maybe you should go on with the story. Maybe he should. So I'm going to. <laughs> but let me read this uh, little quote here from, by the way, all the articles linked down below. Uh, you can check them out for yourself. But this is a quote from the Video Game Chronicles uh, article. It says, Horizon Zero Dawn 2 is said to be gigantic in scope with a larger game world, which, by the way, the Horizon Zero Dawn game world was already big in of Mm -hmm. itself. But with scope with a larger game world and more freedom to explore it than its predecessor, which is amazing, People with the knowledge of the game also indicated the inclusion of a co-op feature. That's cool. Although it's not clear if this is delivered via the main story or a separate mode. Now, I wonder if it is a separate mode. Uh, If you ever played the co-op modes in Splinter Cell, it was kind of the story mode, but it was just a different take on it. I don't know how to explain it. Did you ever play Splinter Cell ever? Nope. Oh, okay. Uh, but the co-op modes in Splinter Cell weren't really the main story. So I wonder if that's yeah. what you're talking about. I'm not a huge fan of Cup, so I really hope it's not like the only way to play the game. No, I, I imagine it won't be. Like, I, I hope imagine it's it... just like a mode. Yeah, that's um, the thing. Um, but yeah, gigantic though. Now I need to really play the first one before I get too far behind. Yes, you do. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn is really, really good. Do I like it better than God of War? And I and I think that's an unfair question that I asked myself and nobody really asked me. <laughs> uh, but I will answer my own brain. Uh, Good job. I personally like Horizon Zero Dawn better than God of War, in my oh, personal opinion. The horror! In my personal opinion. I like it better because that's my gaming taste. Yeah. But the fact that next gen is going to be even bigger it's going to be gigantic Mm. now the other thing in this report and we all knew this was coming come on but the report also says that horizon zero dang it a horizon zero dawn 2 (laughs) is going to um it's going to use the dual sense controller right it's going to utilize it and How did we all know this? It's because whenever they talked about the adaptive controller, the adaptive Mm -hmm. triggers, they're like, oh, you can pull it back and it'll, you know, give you tension. I I don't don't know, off the top of my head, kind of like when you're pulling back a bow. And I'm like, really? Like, like you're trying to fool us here. Yeah. And it's like, oh, Horizon Zero Dawn will utilize this. And like, of course it will. Yeah. (laughs) Like, it's probably the whole reason they made the triggers that way. 
Uh, what do you think about this news? Any 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 other thoughts? Um, I'm excited. I like to invest in series. Mm-hmm. Like I don't even like reading books that aren't in a series. Like yeah, I don't know why, but I prefer to read book series. So yeah. and I like movie series. Like I like. I guess I just don't like things to end. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because I have this problem when they do end, I go like, "What do I do now?" Mm-hmm. Um, so I like it. Of course, now I'm just like, "Oh, good! It's a game I have to play that I haven't yet before I get too far behind, and I still haven't finished The Last of Us, and I need to play that before the next one comes out." <laughs> it's, I think, Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn is a little daunting, <laughs> but um, it's a, it, it's pretty big, which is why it's saying like it's going to be even bigger. Yeah. I'm like, what? Wow, but really good news. And the, yeah. my last note on it is like good for Guerrilla Games. Uh, they went out of Kill Zone and they went straight into Horizon Zero Dawn, and they were successful with it. Now they got you know pretty much a tenure uh, for Horizon Zero Dawn, and saying like they're they're going to be in Horizon Zone. They're going to be in Horizon business for a long time. Good for you, Guerrilla Games. Congratulations. Yeah. This is amazing. Thank you. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, number two gaming news. I did not tell you about this. I did no, not. You did not. I did not brief you on this one. Uh, but yeah, so Team Fortress Two and CS:GO, uh, Counter Strike Global Offensive, offensive, offensive. I, I I hope I didn't offend anybody with that. Oh jeez. <laughs> uh, had a leaked source code. Leaks uh, leaked source code that could lead to malware. Hooray, malware! Everybody, everybody loves malware. Uh, so. Earlier this week, around Tuesday or Wednesday this past week, uh, there was reports coming out from Reddit, the Reddit community, saying like, hey, listen, do not boot up Team Fortress 2 on your computer. Don't boot up CSGO because there's a leaked source code and it could lead to a remote code. uh, Oh, no. uh, Remote code execution. Thank you, Adam. I knew it was RCE, but I forgot what the E stood for. Uh, Remote code execution, meaning that... Uh, once the source code was in, a hacker could get into the source code into your own computer and steal your personal files Ooh. directly from your computer. That's not good. Yeah. Uh, so apparently uh, people are saying, like, do not go into TF2. This is a danger zone. But then again, there's a quote here. Woohoo. Uh, so this is, again, article linked down below. Valve has reached out, Valve being the uh, developers behind TF2. So Valve has reached out with a comment saying, uh, we have reviewed the leak code and believe it being a believe it to be a reposting of a limited CSGO engine code uh, depot released to partners in late 2017 and originally leaked in 2018. From this review, we have not found any reason for players to be alarmed or avoid the current builds. As always, playing the official servers is recommended for great security. Uh, so people are still kind of avoiding playing Team Fortress 2. I used to play it a lot. I haven't really in lately, but uh, Liz, any thoughts? I mean, I think it's a good idea that the players are still not playing it. Yeah. Like, that'd be like, that'd be like during this day, be like, mm-hmm. everyone seems fine. Yeah. Let's go to the mall. Pretty much. Actually, pretty much. Like, <laughs> uh, It's kind of like this, where there's a lot of viruses going around. A lot, uh, one particular virus going around. And <laughs> you lots. You gotta go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, drink everybody. Some, drink some of your, your water to buy drink. <laughs> Whatever the heck it is. Um, Juice. What is it? I, who knows? I just, I it's just in a bottle and I drink it. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the thing. A lot of players are just saying, like, great, Valve, that's great that you're saying it. However... <laughs> but I'm going to give it a month. <laughs> exactly. Like, that's the thing. Wouldn't you, if your computer and all of your personal files were on a line, I would not trust Valve with saying it like, oh, no, it's fine. You just go in and you all play a little bit and give us the monies. It's fine. No, thank you. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> there's, there's a lot on the line here. It's not like my computer is going to slow down. It's not like my frame rate is going to just drop yeah. in my personal files are on the line. Yeah. No, not going to do that. But, uh, they're saying that, uh, it was a older source code. Other people are saying it's still active. 
bottom line here is that be protected, you know, stay safe out there, both in the outside world and apparently in the in your own home. In We're your not own. safe anywhere. Yeah, that's the thing. It's just like, I don't know. I can't stand people who are taking advantage of the situation. Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. It's just so like, many people are taking advantage of what's happening right now. And it's sad. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, in not this to time, get off topic. Yeah, it's in this time. If you're a hacker, chill just, out. Just try and be a good person for once. Yeah, just chill out until everything you know opens up again, and then and you know then you can be a jerk again. Continue as usual. Yeah, but stop being a jerk for just you know two minutes. That's cool. Go anyway, you. Anyway, moving on to the number one gaming news. Yeah, number one gaming news. Uh, and this again has to do with the coronavirus and uh, organizers of PAX West are saying that we're still going through with our plans and Labor Day weekend. Wow. But uh, they are optimistic, saying that uh, they've talked to health officials about this and they're pretty confident with it. I just want to open up. Every time I say like, oh, I've been in church world so much and been a pastor for so long. When I say I want to open up, I immediately in my brain like, I want to open up with a word of prayer. <laughs> <laughs> or like... Uh, Let's close out with a word of prayer. No brain. <laughs> I mean, always. I'm always praying, but that's not what I meant that's to not say. What, the, that's not what you want to come out of your mouth. <laughs> uh, but let's let's take a, take a look at this little quote here. Uh, this is from the organizers behind PAX West saying, As the year progresses, we will continue to monitor the situation and work with health officials at all levels of government and intend to follow all CDC and who, <laughs> just kidding, uh, WHO, World Health Organization guidelines as they are released. That said, actions already taken by our convention center and local government have, been, have left us optimistic. And we will continue working with them to make sure we will that we take the correct steps throughout the summer. So again, PAX West is supposed to be Labor Day weekend, uh, I believe September 4th through the 6th, if I'm right. Uh, so that's <laughs> that's right after summer ends. Uh, it's still summer. No. Well, okay, Mrs. Season. Oh, okay, Mrs. Equinox over here. Um once August ends, it's summer's over. Well, you don't have to tell me that. I decorate for fall on my birthday. Yeah. Uh, and your birthday again? August 31st. Thank you. I need to know for my own information. You as your know husband. my <laughs> birthday. Shut um, up. But yes. Yeah, so again, this is... Uh, okay. So first and foremost, you're in Seattle, PAX West. Seattle, the the Pacific Northwest, is pretty much a hot spot for coronavirus right now. Uh, the state of Washington was in serious lockdown pretty much before anybody else. California, um, you know, Washington, these were on like serious mm -hmm. lockdowns, and yet they're saying that after talking with health officials, let me let me pull up this quote one more time. Let me read that last sentence. That said, actions have already been taken by our convention center and local government have left us optimistic and we will continue working with them. Uh, so one of two things. Okay. So one, one take you can take away from this uh, little news space is like, Oh, uh, they're just in it for the money and uh, they're going to be canceled soon. Just like Gamescom was just like E3 GDC is um, mm -hmm. uh, canceled away uh, or delayed. You could say that like, okay, they're just going to be canceled. However, I'm seeing this as almost like a silver lining. They are working with health officials. They are working with their local governments. And yes, local governments right now. By the way, you should check out this uh, one little clip from the uh, governor of, no, the mayor of Las Vegas and how she just wants to make her people a control group for the coronavirus. You should really check it out. It's kind of amazing. Anyway. How, it's kind of amazing how she talks. But, um, that's the thing is that, yeah, some governments are kind of a little lax with this. However, you could see this as a little silver lining to say that by September, we might get back to normal. Yeah, you can see it as silver lining. And they just say that they remain optimistic. They're not saying we're definitely we're going full force ahead. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it. Like, no, I feel like if they don't see anything changing right. in the next couple months, they have time to pull back. Mm -hmm. And say, maybe we should not do it. Yeah. You know, like, 
E3 had to cancel sooner because it's in the beginning of the summer. So it's Mm -hmm. a little different. So I, it would be nice if there was something going on. I mean, not that we could go to it. Yeah. But, um, it is a silver lining, but also keep in mind, they're not saying they're definitely doing it. They're saying they're optimistic and, you know, they're working with healthcare professionals Mm -hmm. to make sure that it's safe. But I'm sure if those healthcare professionals say, listen, we're not seeing it getting better. We don't see how this is going to work at this point. Yeah. They'd be like, all right, they at least they're tried. Exactly. So it is I'm I'm optimistic about this mm-hmm. news. I want things to get back to the way they were. Maybe, you know, where we have better hygiene. We are more cautious with spreading diseases mm-hmm. in the future. Might still have to wear masks for a while. Sure. I see us wearing masks for at least a year. Yeah, and that's the thing, is that I still want us to go out and socialize again. You know, and if a convention can be open, a convention, yeah. not just a convention, but PAX West can mm-hmm. be open uh, by September. I see this as just kind of like a really good thing to look forward to and say that maybe there might be a day where we can just go outside and be people again. Uh, I certainly miss people. I miss you guys. How you doing? Uh, we've never met yet, but maybe we will someday. I've met a couple of you. I miss Target. I do miss. Ta- I miss the movie theater. I miss the movies. I miss the movie theater, and I miss going out to dinner. Mm-hmm. I miss going out to dinner. That that's what we used to do all the time. We experiment with restaurants. Like we had just started, we got back in our groove, moving mm-hmm. here. We're like, all right, yeah, we're gonna go experiment. We were just starting to experiment with new restaurants. We're stopping going to the ones that we knew we liked. We're yeah, like, all right, let's experiment. And then this happened, and we got stopped dead in our tracks. But yeah, PAX West. If it's coming back, if they're actually talking to government officials and health officials. And saying that, like, we seem optimistic about it. Mm-hmm. I'm optimistic about it, too. I'm sorry. You can call me that, you know, you call me stupid, whatever. But I'm optimistic with this news. But uh, that does it with the top three gaming news. Again, Horizon Zero Dawn is set to be a trilogy and it's supposed to be a huge game in the PS5 uh, era. Team Fortress 2 and CSGO, there's some malware going on. Would you feel safe booting up? Team Fortress 2. Have you booted up Team Fortress 2 in the past week? Let us know in the comments down below. If you're watching this on YouTube, hooray! (laughs) Um, And finally, the organizers behind PAX West saying that they are optimistic about the future, uh, saying that they can open a convention center in uh, early September. Great if that is true, but, you know, let's keep our hopes in check at this point Mm -hmm. in time. Uh, So with that said, I think it's a good time to jump into our final segment. Again, we don't have a guest this week. I'm excited about our guest next week. Uh, uh, I'm just going to say it. No, I'll keep it a surprise. It's a good friend of mine uh, and yours as well. But yeah, so we'll save that for next week in episode 99. But this week, it's just us. So let's just jump into it to our final segment. Every single week here on the Games of Groceries podcast, we like to have a little discussion about the games industry, uh, whether it be uh, game preservation or female gamers, or like last week where we talked with Dayan Hutton about, uh, oh no, <laughs> uh, emotional performances in games. I almost there forgot. Go. I almost forgot. It was a long day. It was a very long day today. Uh, if you want to, you know, hear us talk about anything or anything again call uh call up what's the biz call them up adam's gotta go to bed good night everybody <laughs> uh but yeah so let, let's talk about this for a little bit uh you know for the next half hour or so oh. but so this week we're going to be talking about don't let video games take your entire life and we talked a little yeah. bit about this in other podcasts so other uh topics but when you make it this far almost 100 episodes you're bound to have some repeated topics. We want to revisit it as we yeah. mature, <laughs> mature, um, and uh, you know, learn a little bit more about ourselves. And uh, we talked about this in adult, uh, adulting and gaming. Yeah, we we it's like we're not repeating the subject, but we're touching on the same ideas, right? And instead of adulting and gaming and saying that you have responsibilities and you game, uh, hence games and groceries, you play video games, but you have to buy groceries. Ha, there's the name. Ha ha. But anyways, but this is like 
don't let video games take away life memories yeah. from you. Now, when we talk about life memories or life in general, what are we talking about? It's like, let's define the subject first. Like, don't bring your video games on vacation. Okay. Like, if you're on family vacation, they can probably stay home. Well, let, let's talk. We're just uh, defining life. When we say don't oh, take. Well, that's what I mean. Like, when, we, when yeah. I think of, like, life and the memories, I think of family vacation i think of mm -hmm. going out on like going to the park yeah hopefully Foki was asleep when i said that uh oh um he was like going on like outings not mm -hmm. even outings but even like playing in the house like i remember growing up for a while now i was small so it might not have been it might have only been a year mm -hmm. but we had family game night on sunday night right every sunday night and I remember that. And I love that because I love board games. Mm -hmm. And now this whole conversation isn't going to be harping on video games. No. This is a video not. game podcast after um, all. That would be weird. Yeah. Um, Stop playing so video like games. It's those things like just those like special moments, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The way I define life is what's outside, what's what's there in front of you. And when mm -hmm. I say life, it's just like making dumb memories with your friends or oh, making yeah. special memories with your family. And I don't want you to be harped down on your video games. So we're going to be talking mm -hmm. about the two different sides to this argument here. And then we're going to be talking about a middle ground here, which is what I asked you on social media. Follow us on social media at gaming groceries on Twitter, gaming groceries, all one word on Instagram. And I'm going to be asking you, but that's the thing is that like the life memories, the things that yeah. are going to, you're going to take with you for a lifetime uh, especially I always say this, uh, one time when I was uh, really young and, you know, me and my mom were broke, uh, you know, she, she wanted to rely on memories of me as a kid and, uh, you know, going somewhere. And I will never forget. There was one day where it was pouring rain out and I was in my pajamas and my mom just says, why don't we go to Wendy's for dinner? And I was like, but it's, it's raining. I was really young. I was like uh, six or seven, maybe. And I just remember thinking, like, we're going to Wendy's in my pajamas, in the pouring rain, in my bare feet. This is crazy. I heard this story a lot when we were dating. And yeah. I remember your mom, maybe we didn't recreate it exactly, but we did <laughs> go to Wendy's yeah. in, like, I don't know if we were barefoot. I think we were yeah. in the flip flops or something. I vaguely remember doing that when we were dating, when mm -hmm. I was, like, having dinner with you and your mom were like let's go to wendy's because it was like pouring rain and your mom remembers the memory she's like let's go to wendy's said, okay because yeah. i loved wendy's so but that's what we mean by <laughs> life life memories you yeah know? those little things that you happen to remember now let's talk about the two sides where video games come into life yeah. because again video game podcasts hooray <laughs> you, you made it everybody it's a gaming podcast um there's two sides of the coin here. Uh, let's talk about the one extreme here where you don't want to experience anything in life and you only get sucked into mm -hmm. games and video games. Yeah. That's the only thing you do because life is terrible anyway. Why would you want to go outside? Why do you want to be let down by everybody else when you have games? Not even online gaming. You're just sucked into a game by yourself. Right. Right. And now I'm not trying to guilt you. I'm not trying to, to shame you for doing that because I had moments in my life. Oh, yeah. Everyone needs to have that time sometimes. Yeah. There's been moments in my life where I just needed games for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, like moments with Skyrim. Skyrim really helped me get mm -hmm. through things. The the, uh, the Division really got me through a lot of things. Um, and we'll talk about that another time. But, um, but we're talking about the extreme example yeah. to say that. Life let me down. People have let me down. I don't want to make memories with anybody, and I just want to stay with my mm -hmm. video games. You know, uh, let's talk about that for a little bit. What What do you think will lead to that kind of uh, mentality? Well, I think you pretty much said it. Being or feeling like people have let you down, that you don't have anyone. Yeah. Like feeling like you don't even have anyone in your life to make memories with. Yeah. You know. Do you think that was like ever true? Like, did you did you ever feel like kind of like that ever in life? Probably, maybe not exactly like that, but mm -hmm. I mean, I have felt very alone. I went mm -hmm. through. I don't think I've mentioned this before. I went through a very depressive period 
my first semester of college after you graduated. Yeah. Um, and I think it was partially from that. Like I felt I didn't have anyone to eat lunch with. Cause like when we went to college together for two years mm-hmm. before you graduated, I had every meal with you basically. Yeah. And, um, when I didn't have a meal with you, I ate in my bedroom mm-hmm. alone. Cause that's what I like. <laughs> um, and I was in my own room, which didn't help. I didn't have a roommate because my roommate before was room was now rooming with her sister who had come, who was a freshman in our school, um, which was fine. I mean, that's her sister. Like, right. That's fine. But I wasn't friends with her friends. Mm. So I didn't, I didn't have a lot of friends. I'm not a big friend group person. I stick to like a few people and that's my people. Um, yeah. And I hadn't quite found my my friend group that I didn't end up having at the time. So I didn't really have anyone, literally, at my school with me to spend my time with a lot mm-hmm. of at the time. So, yeah, I would say I felt like that. And really, it was bad. I would eat every meal in my room. I did have one friend that would come in occasionally, but that might have been in the second semester after the fact. But um, it, I, I would lay there because I had a futon because mm-hmm. I was fancy. Um. I laid there and I didn't want to do anything and I watched Gra- it was the f- very first time I ever watched Grey's Anatomy. Mm-hmm. I don't suggest Grey's Anatomy if you're going through a depressive state, it's not going to help. Yeah. Um but and even then when it got really bad, I didn't even watch want to watch that. I just had it on and I was just like not there. Um so I would say yeah, I've I've felt similar yeah. to that where I kind of felt like meh, who cares. Yeah, and and like I said before, when I got into pretty de- depressive states, I would just be sucked into video games and not caring about the world. And I just, uh, I'm not trying to say that like, oh, woe is me, but we've all been through that. Yeah. If you're listening to this, you've probably been through this where I'm not trying to say I'm the only one who've experienced this. A lot of people who you wouldn't expect have been through a severe depressive state. Yeah. And it's just a matter of who you are now is just kind of how you got out of it. And that's the thing. Uh, The extreme side is that you let video games take away from life Mm -hmm. because life has let you down so much that you just don't want to interact with anybody. And this is an extreme. Sometimes you taper away from that extreme, but that's still an extreme that we kind of lean towards when we talk about life taking away or video games taking away life Mm -hmm. in general. Uh, Now I want to kind of dive into the other extreme, which I can't stand but i love them as people Mm -mm. i love you what was that (laughs) that was me giving him a hug as a person Mm -mm. okay Uh, anyways but now let's talk about the other extreme we have one extreme where video games obviously are the priority they don't want to experience life with anybody else the video games are all they uh consume and i'm sorry if you're going through that and sometimes we do go through that and I'm, you know, if you want to talk to us, DMs are open, but oh, yeah. I recommend talking to somebody who you truly care about and has understood you for years and, you know, get to that person. I only know you through, you know, a DM, but I'm willing to talk to you. Oh, yeah, definitely. But talk to somebody who loves you and cares for you. It, you might not think that they do, but guess what? They do. Um, They've known you for years and my boys know who I am. But anyways, and so does my wife. My wife knows who I am. I do have to say, though, not to get too far off topic, but right. when I went through mine, I found my place in people that didn't know me mm-hmm. because I part of my problem was that I was like, these guys never want to hang out with me. I had I was in a very tiny major. There were like eight of us in my major. Yeah. And they would all hang out and they had jokes. And I just felt like an outsider. I was like, and then it kind of hit me. I was like, they don't like me because I don't stick around and I don't help and Mm -hmm. I just go back to my room and I'm sad and lonely. So I started staying and helping, even though I had no idea what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I started talking to them and they became my absolute best friends that got me through my last two years of college Mm -hmm. or year and a half, whatever. Um, But they were my family and you know that like they were my people and I still, I don't talk to them much anymore, but they are, I still love them and I care about them all so much. So even if it's not people that Mm -hmm. you've known for years and know you, if there's someone that you're interested in being, this sounds weird. If they, but like, if just find something that makes you drive your way out of that feeling, just find something that you think would, I don't know. I give up. Yeah. (laughs) 
well, figure it out. <laughs> well, let's move on to our other extreme here because yes. I already teased it enough. It's the people that say that the other <laughs> the other ways is that saying like video games are no good. Always avoid them. Always a waste of time. Always a waste of time. And that once you grow up, video games are over and you're a man child. If you ever play any sort of form of a video game, because life is out there. Yeah. Life is in hiking. Life is in, I don't know, kayaking. You know, whatever you do in the outdoors. I don't know what the outdoors look like anymore. But that's the thing is that they say that life is better than video games. Mm -hmm. Read a book and listen to classical music because video games are always a waste. And that's an extreme. That's to say that video games can never offer any sort of life experiences. So. Video games have great music. Right. Well, like, how can... How does that side, you know, kind of differ from the other side? And how is that side also a wrong extreme? That side is a wrong extreme in a way of like they're discounting the people who play video games saying they're not helping the problem on the other extreme by saying mm -hmm. the people who are playing video games are worthless and wasting their time. Yeah. You know, because if imagine being in that depressive state where you think no one likes me, no one cares about me, I have no one. And then hearing some stranger say that you're wasting your time playing video games, you go back to say, I am wasting my time. I am the worst. Yeah. Like that's not going to help. So those people who say those things, it's just like mm -hmm. just because you don't it, it goes back to it, just because you don't like it doesn't mean everyone else has to hate it and agree with you. Yeah. Like there are people who really hate hiking. Not a fan of it. Don't want to do it. Your boy. Exactly. I am interested in hiking. Yeah. Like, I would enjoy that, even though the outdoors want to kill me. Yeah. But that's the thing. Like, you are, have zero interest in that. I have uh, absolutely negative interest in but hiking. But I don't think that makes you worthless or less of a person because mm -hmm. you don't want to experience that yeah. type of view that a hike can offer. Mm -hmm. You know? Like. Yeah. That's the thing. But, yeah, it's to judge how something can give you life experiences, yeah. right? It's to judge something to say that, like, video games can never offer any sort of memory with a family member and any sort of memory with your friends. Uh, and it kind of discounts what mm -hmm. video games can do for people. Yeah. And creating life memories, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the one side where it says that video games have nothing to offer in life. And the other extreme is that video games are the only thing to offer in my life, mm -hmm. right? And it's these two extremes where it's a, to say that video games shouldn't take away from life. And that's where we meet this kind of gray area here. Uh, and like I said, when we meet from video games can only offer me life and video games have nothing to offer in life, but we meet them in the middle and they say that video games can complement life. Mm-hmm. Almost like salt and pepper on a chicken, you know, chicken by itself. Now, see, okay, here's no, how the we're not, thing we're not going. In, we're not going boiled into chicken that. No, tastes disgusting. No. OK, we're not going into that right now. Boiled chicken tastes disgusting. Okay, but, dear. Uh, but that's the thing is that these two extremes come together and mm -hmm. say that video games. Yes, they will not offer you life they will not offer you wisdom uh in the way that life experiences do and i'm not trying to discount video games in any sort of way i think video games can offer some sort of wisdom and knowledge but they are not the ultimate source right and they're not like discounted they ultimately complement life mm -hmm. i've had so many memories of and we're gonna be talking about this next week of um, I'm just going to little tease you here. Uh, we're bringing on uh, Quentin from the greatest show. You literally on cannot keep a secret. I can. I'm Every so week excited. you're like, I'm going to keep a secret. And then some point in the conversation, you're like, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to say He's it. the worst. I'm gonna the say fact it. that I didn't know I was getting engaged when I did is amazing because... I don't know how we kept that mm. together. If you want to ask us how our engagement was, ask us for our ask us anything, mm -hmm. or ask us on what's the biz. Maybe we'll talk about there. But um, who knows? But we're going to be talking with Quentin from the Greatest Show on Dirt, and we're going to talk about our childhood basement video gaming memories. Yes, it's going to be good. Um, but anyways, it's I have so many memories of building friendships yeah. through video games. We talked about this with Andrew Orsi mm -hmm. on on the one episode, uh, episode ninety five, I believe. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, 95. Mm -hmm. Good job, Adam. Um, but yeah, so episode 95, where he said that he made video, um, he made friends in college 
through video yeah. games, right? Yeah. Uh, and I suggested in the same way where he just opened up his do- uh, door to his dorm room. You should open up the door to your own house and let strangers no. come in and watch. And I said no. You, you said no, but I think that's the no, best no. way to create life memories. No, no. Loki could run out in the middle of Main Street. Well, no, we'll keep him on a leash. In the house? That's mean. What, uh, what kind of life is that for a dog? I'm just saying that a good life experience is to have... Remember that crazy guy we saw at Sheets the other day? He Be- wasn't crazy. No, he wasn't crazy. I shouldn't say he that. Was not cra- he was on something. <laughs> but he wasn't crazy. But imagine him coming into our home and Absolutely and playing not. Smash Brothers with us. No, thank you. That would be amazing. No, it with wouldn't. Him. What did he get on his sub again? Um, <laughs> so he didn't. So this is so off topic, but this. So I'm we gonna bring up the social media answers as you say it. And he got a meatball sub, mm-hmm. and he thought he was getting cheesy bites on the side, and he accidentally put it on his sub. <laughs> Before he knew that, he asked for ketchup. <laughs> I don't know whether the ketchup was for the sub or for the. I'm not laughing bites. at him. I'm laughing at the moment. But now this man has ketchup and cheesy bites. On a sub. Like, I'm, I really want to know. I should have asked him today when we passed him. We passed him again today. Mm-hmm. We were He was on his bike and we were driving by. I was like, oh, that's the guy. I should have asked him, did you put the ketchup on, on the sub with the cheesy bites? I really want to know what that sandwich tasted like. He's a good guy. It was just... He was, was very funny. nice. Yeah, he's so nice. Um, But imagine that life memory. Anyways. <laughs> but anyways... So I asked you on asked you on social media, uh, um, on Twitter and uh, Instagram. Uh, we have a couple answers here. Uh, Volt Supreme on Instagram says, uh, "When I, so I asked you guys, um, what was my question? <laughs> what are some favorite family and friends memories that involved video games?" Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Volt says this. When I was a lot younger, and me and my three siblings still lived at home. I went out and bought a Wii with four controllers. I set it all up without anyone knowing and then surprised the family. It was good. Uh, it was a good buy, even though it made more sense technically to get an Xbox or a PS4, but whatever, uh, because the Wii was a console that really encouraged playing games as a group. I, I agree with mm-hmm. that, actually. Uh, the Wii was great for that. Uh, it provided a lot of great memories uh, that last a few years of my home life playing Mario Kart, WarioWare, Bomberman, yeah, Bomberman, and others. Now, my girls are old enough, and we occasionally play the same games together on the same old Wii. That's nice. Yeah. So he's creating memories with his family, his brothers, now his daughters. I love that stuff. Yeah. You know, and and that's the thing. The Wii was really good in group settings. I remember playing bowling, and then sometimes you'd accidentally release it when you're back, and you end up throwing the ball at the people Mm -hmm. behind you, and they go, wow! I never did that on purpose. Yeah, I bet you did. Did you ever play the Wii? Because you had the Wii when you were growing up. I did. did. Yeah. What kind of memories did you have with the Wii with your family? Um, I remember. So my Aunt Donnie mm-hmm. is my grandmother's cousin. She's not really my aunt. But I am listening, by the way. I'm bringing up the other social media answers. She loves golf. Most of my dad's side loves golf. Mm-hmm. Um, And... So we had the Wii Fit, so we had the golf, and I just remember Sarah playing it, and like, um, so that was, like, I just remember my Aunt Donnie interacting with that, and that was fun, and then I re- just remember playing tennis with, um, yeah, just like with my little sister, and I think even with you, mm-hmm. um, and the bowling, like, mostly we did the bowling, mm-hmm. um, and then we got the rock band for it. Yeah. And so that was really fun, even though I only sang like two songs. <laughs> that was my, those, I had two solid songs. Um, but I remember like you playing with Sarah yeah. and her boyfriend at the time. And yeah, it was just a blast. Yeah. I had like the really basic games. We didn't have like the crazy stuff. Yeah. We had fit. And I had, I had Sims Castaway. Didn't like it. And then I and then we did have Mario Kart and I hate I don't like playing Mario Kart on the Wii. It was very wonky. I agree. It was very wonky. Not a fan. So then we have uh answers on Twitter. Uh the greatest story ever played, Dan from The Greatest Story Ever Played. Uh we we had him on for two episodes. Uh check it out on the playlist of uh podcasts with guests. Uh he says, Jordan and I played uh The Walking Dead seasons one and two together. 
each week I'd go to his house and we'd play an episode. Uh, then we spend our week speculating on what's next. It was really fun and one of my favorite gaming uh, experiences. So they experience a, an episodic game together mm-hmm. as two buddies, you know. Uh, Jordan, by the way, the other um, co host over at the Greatest Story I Ever Played podcast. And they would just go over each other's house and just experience yeah. it. And then they would speculate, like, like just constantly talking about it. They would yeah. just, you know, again, it's a video game that complements life moments. Yeah. Right. Bringing each other together. And they have a podcast together. Mm-hmm. Like we have a podcast together. Yeah. Except, you know, I can never escape you. So. Why would you want to escape me? I don't know. Let's move on to our other answer. I never want to escape you. Aww. You're my precious angel. And I'm the demon. Anyways. You're not the demon. You're right. I'm just annoying. Um, <laughs> Commander Nikki says this. They definitely helped me find friends in school. Uh, and like, um, and like, that's a massive plug. Not going to lie. Oh, that's nas- massive plus. I'm sorry. Massive plus. Not a massive plug. Um, that's a massive plus. Uh, not going to lie. Uh, once I played through one entire Legend of Spyro game on couch co-op with my best friend, that was amazing. Uh, we played lots of couch co-op and versus at some point, uh, and at some point it was lots of funs. In one game, we even kept messing up on purpose because we thought the animation was so hilarious. We had our entire, <laughs> we had our entire bodies ache from laughing. That's fun. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like... Again, glitches in games with your buddies. It, you always say that this this game is better with friends, and most of the time that's true. Mm-hmm. It's so much better with friends. And um, I still remember, you know, playing The Division with Frank, and we would just always find glitches in the game. We would just, like, laugh hysterically. Um, I mean, one big gaming moment, again, coming back with Frank, uh, who I don't talk to as much as I want to, Um, I really should get back on that, but uh, me and Frank on, and I think I said this on the podcast, where we were waiting for Halo 4 to come out, and this is in college, so, you know, kind of a pseudo life, you don't really have any responsibilities in in the real world, Uh, but in the uh, expectation, or the anticipation of Halo 4, we played Halo 1, 2, and 3 on separate nights, but we pulled all-nighters just playing uh, Halo, the story mode, together on co-op mode, but this would be in the middle of the night. And if you know anything about an all-nighter, everything is just so much funnier when you're just dead tired. So we just have you all said these. This was you and Frank doing this? Yeah. So this was at Bible college too. Yeah. But this was me and Frank and you. I know. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. Um, it was a hoot. <laughs> uh, but we have. We the... need to talk another time about my experiences with you and Frank. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, we had a YouTube channel at one point, uh, Scott's Destiny. That was fun. That was funny. You should look it up. Mm hmm. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, we would just uh, spend all night playing Halo and just making uh, inside jokes with each other. It was a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, that's, a, that's the whole point of your answers on social media is that video games don't take away life, they complement mm-hmm. life. But they do have the potential to take away life, right? If you let them, right? Yeah. Uh, Like I said, it doesn't, video games shouldn't be discounted for taking away any kind of life here. It shouldn't be saying that video games are a waste of time. Life is out there, not in there. Mm -hmm. But especially in these times, in quarantine life. Like memories are made at home right now. Yeah. It's the only place they're being made. Exactly. And you can connect with so many people with online gaming. You're Mm -hmm. hanging out with them. In an online game, it's just a really good feeling. Uh, I was listening to the Gus and Eddie podcast not too long ago, and it was Eddie's brother who pointed out that the uh, as soon as you log off and you take your headphones off, it is the loneliest five seconds of your entire life because you go from one moment hanging out with your buddies online yeah. to completely alone. Yeah. It's just like immediate shut off. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. But it still feels like you're hanging out with your friends online. Yeah. You know? And it, and in these times, that's needed. Yeah. Uh, any other thoughts? Um, Not in particular. Um, All done. Oh, good. I'm happy for you. Thank you. It was coconut um, mango, by the way. But yeah, I mean... I think definitely playing playing games online right now, if you were playing games online before all this happened, it'll almost feel 
normal mm-hmm. for a little bit because yeah. you're just doing what you did before. Um, but yeah, I mean, we have memories even after we were married of video games. Yeah. We played that kitchen game that gave uh, me... Uh, Overcook. Oh my gosh. Overcook. That gave me so much anxiety. I played it once with him and that was it because that, it was too much. I remember um, we played L.A. Noir together. Yes, we did play L.A. Noir together. Mm-hmm. And then we partially play um, The Last of Us together when I can't <laughs> get through something. I just, Adam, do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, And then we did... um um. Well, we played Life is Strange together. I'm thinking of the one we actually played together with the two guys. Oh, oh, A Way Out. Yes, we yeah. played that together. That was really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we tried playing Halo, and I kept falling off cliffs, so I gave mm-hmm. up. Yeah. So that was my very first experience actually playing a video game. So don't judge me for falling off stairs yeah. multiple times. Not just cliffs. She fell off <laughs> I could, stairs. I could not figure out the stairs. <laughs> it was just oh a spiral God. staircase. And <laughs> I was like, take- Liz, just, okay, we're going to go up. And you're like, okay. And now we're going to turn to the side. Okay. Now walk forward. Okay. How did you fall? <laughs> like immediately she took one step forward and she fell. <laughs> it, would take, it would take me a good five to 10 minutes to get up a flight that of was stairs. The, that was the greatest challenge <laughs> in Halo. Not the combat. I was fine at the combat. At the combat, but then it's like, oh no, a staircase I mean, even that in spirals. The combat, Adam did most of it, but if I could hit someone, I was doing pretty good. Yeah. Oh no, <laughs> spiral staircase. But when it came to anything near the edge of a cliff or stairs or a ledge, I was falling off and I was yeah. dying. It was fun. <laughs> but now we're making. But that's- but that's a good memory we have. And mm-hmm. that was part of our journey in doing this. It what made me more interested in gaming mm-hmm. and opened us to doing this together. And it's hilarious to think about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing is that video games definitely puts compliments to life. It's mm-hmm. a seasoning to life. It, Just it's like a, everything else. Yeah. It is part of the gateway to life. It's like everything else. Like mm-hmm. you said, uh, you know, just like with your whole hiking and boating and whatever you do outside i hate hiking um in the same way that video games can do that for you Mm -hmm. but understand that video games aren't the ultimate provider for life you know play online games with your friends play couch co-op when all this is you know done and over with have your friends over have a smash tournament man like smash tournaments on the on the gamecube i'm sorry I, i don't like smash ultimate maybe i do maybe i won't i don't know but the gamecube one uh melee was yeah we do and it's the ultimate one i love that one because i'm old but that's the thing is that like have your friends over have a smash tournament whatever whatever kind of uh thing you want to do uh you know have any kind of party with your friends with that uh and that's the thing video games can create memories and we have talked about that before but understand that there's two extremes but meet it in the middle let it complement life mm-hmm. you know uh any other thoughts before we close out nope cool again uh we're coming up on episode 100 that's going to be an ask us anything podcast and that's what we're going to be doing the entire podcast we're going to be celebrating 100 episodes we're going to be uh, taking in answers from you guys so uh, that's going to be a special episode. And the next episode, next week, episode 99, we're going to have our buddy Quentin on, and we're going to be talking about basement video games. So Woo-hoo. it's going to be a lot of fun. But uh, with all that said and done, definitely check us out on social media. We've said it too many times. At Gaming Groceries on Twitter. I'm at Ace the Grocer. And I'm at Journey First. And if you haven't yet, definitely subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, subscribe to us on uh, on iTunes as well. Or, you know, follow us on Spotify. Any way you can follow us. Uh, leave us a review on Podchaser. If you listen on, 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 on audio, good job. Uh, and if you haven't yet, if you're on YouTube, if you're watching this and you liked what you saw, definitely give it a like. Definitely give it a share so that more people can know about the Games of Groceries channel and that we can build our community of other human beings. So with all that said and done, we thank you for watching this week. We hope you have a safe week. Have a good week. Bye.